You're watching the Air Report. Great show today, some really exciting stuff. Let's get into it. Meta released some very, very interesting audio tools. AudioCraft lets you generate music from text prompts. It consists of three technologies that Meta has open sourced. AudioGen generates various audio effects, MusicGen creates the musical composition, and Encodec is an audio compression codec based on neural networks. Let's check out the music generated by this new tool. Okay, I mean it's not Kanye before he lost his mind, but this honestly sounds like it's almost there. Pretty much like the rest of the generative AI space, it's probably not yet at that level of top creators, but I can definitely see tons of use cases. Some might say that this will replace music creators, but I think it's gonna get much worse than that. Now everyone is gonna start suddenly becoming a music creator, meaning so many people will get a lot more obnoxious. Next. Emily Bender, a linguistics professor at the University of Washington, says that AI hallucinations are not fixable. It's inherent in the mismatch between the technology and the proposed use case, she says. On the other hand, Sam Altman says that the hallucinations problem will get to a much better place in two years. The truth may be somewhere in the middle. The hallucinations problem might improve, but it may never be fully fixed. It's almost like a property of the system. And for some people, like Jasper AI's president Shane Orlick, hallucinations are not a bug but a feature, since they provide users with more creative material. Moving on, Goldman Sachs predicts that the AI boom may be bigger than electricity and PCs, and account for up to 4% of the GDP of the US by 2025. They expect investment of up to $200 billion. Look, we all know that Goldman Sachs has some of the smartest people working there, but bigger than electricity, how do you even measure that? Okay, doesn't really matter. The point is, a bunch of finance super nerds all agree that AI will have a very positive impact on the economy. For people like me, that simply means go harder on AI in whatever way you can. And speaking of AI investments, Canadian chip startup Tensorrent has raised $100 million from Hyundai, Samsung and Kia. It would be so funny if the room temperature superconductor stuff turns out to be true. I wonder how will that affect all of these chip makers raising hundreds of millions of dollars to make super expensive chips that may soon be threatened by much cheaper technology. Anyway, Nvidia has yet another competitor and the AI chip wars continue. Next, nerd drama in the AI world. The domain AI.com used to redirect to ChatGPT and now it redirects to Elon Musk's AI company website x.ai. <laughs> By the way, if you can get your hands on any domain name that's short and revolves around the letter X, I recommend you buy it. Eventually, Elon will want to start a business there and that will be inevitably named X something. And he will pay you a premium for the domain. Anyway, the weird thing about the AI.com domain is that it changed hands in February this year and it was bought by someone for 11 million dollars. Since it redirected to ChatGPT, Everyone assumed OpenAI bought the domain, but now that it's redirecting to ChatGPT's competitor, that theory doesn't sound too reasonable. And speaking of Elon, he says Tesla is working on the final piece of the full self-driving AI puzzle, which is vehicle control. He thinks Tesla will be able to do it by the end of this year. Wow, that would be quite a leap. Definitely not impossible though. Elon went in heavy on AI. The Dojo AI platform will show some progress probably and we're talking about a guy who built like 5 impossible startups in half a lifetime, so probably nothing is out of the question here. Next, an important issue, the EU AI Act regulatory framework for AI is getting finalized and somewhat surprisingly it seems like open source AI models may be exempt from some of the regulation requirements. That would be so awesome. We talk about regulating AI frequently on this channel. Personally, I think that the big AI companies should be somehow regulated, but at the same time, the regulations shouldn't be so demanding 
that they prevent smaller companies and open source developers to build great things. Seems like the European Union is kinda open to recognizing the value that AI open source community can bring to the table and they are willing to offload some of the responsibilities for using the open source AI models from the developers to the end users. That makes sense in my book. Probably open source developers should do their reasonable best to prevent their technology from being used for obvious harm and violence, but asking anybody anything beyond that will start to stifle innovation significantly. Huh. Can I allow myself to be a little optimistic here? I've been burned before, but I may dare to say that this doesn't sound too bad so far. And finally, there's still very little reason to celebrate the successes of AI because no matter how well the West regulates it, there will be places in the world where AI is used for oppression. Iranian authorities are considering a new bill that will use AI surveillance systems to monitor and detect women who don't wear the hijab or whose clothes don't adhere to Islamic law. The new law would also increase the penalties for these women and they may face 5 to 10 years in prison and fines of up to $8,500. The average salary in Iran is around $700 a month. Okay, so I don't want to get Charlie Hebdo here. I'll just say that I and pretty much every reasonable person I've ever met thinks that this is insane. If you think forcing women to dress a certain way is a good thing to do, we'll have to disagree. In my book, this is oppression. And unlike woke Twitter, I don't use that term liberally. My job, which I kinda created for myself, but still my job, is to provide education and commentary on AI. For now, I don't wanna get into a lot of other topics. In this instance, I'm disappointed that AI will be used for oppression and draconian punishment, but it seems like, almost like with every technology, that's just part of the package. And that's the way it is. That was the AI report. Launching the blog and news websites very soon, expanding the brand here, just hit 500 subscribers today. Super grateful to all of you guys. Thank you. I really mean this. Thank you. We have a lot more great content coming, much more than news. Like and subscribe if you want to join us on this beautiful journey and I will see you tomorrow. <laughs>